In this video, I want to start talking about the idea that there are certain issues or problems that come up when we get into dealing with the variables in our study, in, in particular when we're, when we're talking about defining and measuring variables. So you might remember that we said a variable is just is just something something that can change or or vary. It could change or vary within one person. So from one point to the next, a person could be uh, in a good mood versus a bad mood, for example, or it can it can vary from one person to the next. So one person can be in a good mood and another person can be in a bad mood. Those so mood is is a variable. Um, so when you know, we talked before about how you might get started on a line of research by just some question that you're wondering about. There's something you're curious about. Usually that question is going to have to do with variables and relationships between the variables. So just to pick some variables at random, uh, we might we might be curious about intelligence. And we might be wondering about it, whether that has some kind of a relationship with another variable like anxiety. So maybe we have some reason from something we've read or something we've seen to think that there's a relationship between intelligence and anxiety. There's some connection here. Uh, we might come up with a specific hypothesis based on what we saw or learned. And we might say that uh, more intelligent people also tend to be more anxious. Um, so we have this hypothesis. We'd like to go out and test it. But before we get started with any kind of actual study or experiment, we really, the first step in one of the first steps in constructing our study and designing it is we have to deal with how are we going to define and measure each of the variables, in this case, intelligence and anxiety. And there are all kinds of issues. There are all kinds of potential problems or concerns that come up with the choices that you make around this, how you decide to define each thing and how you decide to measure it. So for example, something like intelligence at first glance might seem like pr a pretty straightforward variable, but it's one of the most uh, debated variables out there in terms of different people wanting to define or measure it in different ways and each arguing that one is more valid or more uh, more accurate than another or more appropriate for a particular uh, situation. So for example, with intelligence, uh, are, are we talking about someone's ability to reason through a problem? For example, that might be one way of, of defining intelligence. We give them some kind of problem and we, we, see if, we see if they're able to solve it. But even that, can you know, we could go different directions with that. We could be talking about, are we talking about math problems? Are we talking about logic problems? Are we talking about sort of common everyday problems? Are we talking about uh, things that they're going to work through on paper or where they're going to be given um, an actual physical a puzzle or, or, or mechanical issue to resolve. Um, there's all different kinds of ways in which we might be thinking of intelligence. And, and some people might even disagree with the idea of it being um, about solving problems. There might, they might say that there's other forms of intelligence, like maybe there's emotional intelligence, the ability to uh, accurately and appropriately pick up on what another human being is feeling and respond to that appropriately. So defining it to begin with is going to be challenging. Then we have the issue of, of trying to measure it. So obviously a big uh, a part of our study is being able to tell if someone has more or less of this stuff. Uh, how do we actually assess that? How do we actually say this person has a higher intelligence or a lower intelligence? And of course, the most probably the most famous uh, popular way of measuring this is with, with like an IQ test. Uh, but even something uh, like that, you might think, oh, great, there's this very popular uh, 
well-studied test out there for intelligence, there's still questions about whether that's an appropriate thing to use for your study. Is this the way that you want to measure it? For example, uh, an IQ test uh, might require people to read uh, instructions for how to take the test, or some of the problems might be written word problems. What if somebody doesn't read or reads very poorly or their language skills are not so great? Does that necessarily mean that they're not intelligent? What if they're math a mathematical genius or they're able to uh, apply certain types of intuition to solve problems if they don't have to read the problem? Uh, so there's, there's all sorts of different possibilities that could be going on here. We have to consider these sorts of things uh, when we decide how to measure that variable because obviously if we if we want to be measuring something in, in one way, but we, we choose the incorrect measure, then we might get an, an answer. You know, we might, we might find that there's no relationship between intelligence and anxiety, uh, where if we had used a different measure of intelligence, we might, have, we might have found a relationship. So these are the sorts of, I just want you to get an idea that these are the sorts of issues that come up when you are first designing your study and the entire rest of this section the entire rest of this chapter is going to just be uh, talking about what are those different issues and what are ways that we can uh, figure them out or or make sure that we're on the right track